What's cracking, y'all? Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. Y'all know it is your boy, Ray G. You can find me on X at Ray GQ, and it has been a minute. It's been a while since I've done a trade show here on the channel, but it's the off season, so we got to prepare for moves, taking a look at what's going down in the market. How are dynasty managers reacting, overreacting, panicking to the players right now that are playing in the playoffs or those that have been eliminated? 2024 NFL draft is right around the corner. There are moves being made left and right. So we are diving in to the Discord channel over on Destination Devi. You can access that down below, destinationdevi.com, and look at what the good folks in the Patreon are doing. So we got a lot to talk about, not a lot of time to do it. Y'all know what it is, baby. Let's get it. Okay, let's get it. Let's pull the board up right now and not even play around, get right into it. There's a lot of stuff in here that I saw that we got to talk about. We got to talk about it. So I'll provide the context for those of you who are not watching live on YouTube. And if you are here, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, like the content, help an independent content creator make his hay over here on the old tube of you. We got one right here from my boy, Jimbo. Jimbo said, did I give up too much or not enough or just enough for Christian McCaffrey? We're talking about a 12-team, one-quarterback, PPR, start nine, no premium. So super flex quarterbacks are valued much higher than they are in single quarterback leagues. Christian McCaffrey, in my opinion, should be viewed as the consensus 101 running back off of the board next year. He's incredible and a great offense. So getting the best player in fantasy football seems like a good idea to me. But let's see what Jimbo had to pay. He got Christian McCaffrey and Drake London in a start nine. He had to give up Josh Jacobs, Rashad Bateman, Zamir White, Ty Chandler, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and a 2024 second round pick. This is a slam dunk trade. This is an absolute drop the bomb slam dunk trade for Jim. Let's do it right there. There it is. You're getting one of the best, if not the best fantasy asset in a single quarterback uh, league in Christian McCaffrey, you're getting a talented receiver in London who should be due for a quarterback upgrade. Still not really going to, you know, put a lot of stock into that Atlanta situation today right now with no head coach in place, no OC and no quarterback. But just on the merit, I mean, I would give up Josh Jacobs, Rashad Bateman, Zamir White, Ty Chandler, and Jackson Smith and Jigba in a freaking start nine just for Christian McCaffrey. And then you throw in Drake London on top of it for me. It looks like a lot of hopium. Now, let's let's look at the other side. There's a world where Josh Jacobs moves on from Las Vegas. He's a starter. Zamir White stays in Vegas. He's the starter. Sure, there's a world where maybe Ty Chandler has a role next year and Jackson Smith and Jigba gets some increased work. But in a start nine, I want studs. Start eight, start nine. Give me as many hammers as I can possibly get. And in this case, Jimbo got the hammer of all hammers and Christian McCaffrey. This is a good trade. Give me Christian McCaffrey and Drake London. Good stuff, Jimbo. It's a good trade right there. Let's scroll down and see what else we have inside the Discord to talk about. Uh, we got some Stevenson and Garrett Wilson. Let's check out this one. Got Garrett Wilson in a 10-team Superflex PPR 1.5 tight end premium start 10. So we're at start 10. Still in hammer territory, but the depth starts to increase a little bit when you get into start 10, start 11. So we got Garrett Wilson. It's a 10-team. So that changes the dynamics, right? 10-team start 10. At this point, it's the same damn difference as a 12-team, 8-man lineup, 12-team, 9-man lineup. So I want hammers. I want studs. Ramondre Stevenson, Garrett Wilson, a 2024 third-round pick for Garrett, uh, for Jalen Waddle and the 108. Let's talk about this deal. On one side, you've got two stud-wide receivers, Jalen Waddle and Garrett Wilson. I would prefer Garrett Wilson in a vacuum, but both of those guys seem pretty comparable in value, situation changes. We're hoping Aaron Rodgers is back and he's the Aaron Rodgers that we remember from a couple of years ago. If that's the case, Garrett Wilson is poised to be an absolute star. Jalen Waddle is what he is. He's a dope player. Tyreek Hill is there, so that kind of caps his ceiling and upside. So let's just call those two a wash. Ramondre Stevenson and the 302 or the 108. I'm just going to say right now, I am not moving any top eight pick right now in Dynasty Leagues. I just don't want to do that today. No matter what you think about the class or the players, one guarantee that I can make you and, and, and you could take this shit to the bank and cash it is the price of the brick is going to continue to rise. Those picks, those top eight, top nine, top ten picks are going to continue to rise throughout the draft process. Whatever you can pay 
to get Garrett Wilson or Ramondre Stevenson today, you're probably looking around that same price and cost in April and in May. What's going to change? What situation changes? There's going to be no coach or quarterback to come in to New England that's going to boost Ramondre's stock to that degree. And Garrett Wilson, we're already baking in the fact that Aaron Rodgers is going to be back. So this is a move that I personally would not have made. I would rather Garrett Wilson over Jalen Waddle in a vacuum, but the flexibility that I get with that 108 spot, this is one where I'd rather have kept uh, I'd rather kept the 108. Give me the 108 side. 108 and Jalen Waddle over Ramondre Stevenson, who, who at this point in time in January 13th, I don't know why anybody's out there trading for these, I'll just say mid-level running backs. Ramondre is a good running back, but he's not special. He's not Brees Hall. He's not Christian McCaffrey. I can do without Ramondre Stevenson right now. And the 302 really don't give a damn about that either. So give me the 108 and Jalen Waddle in this scenario. Let's see what else we got as we move down the board in the trade channel. There's a big three-team trade. I don't even want to get into that, trying to decipher that. Let's see what else we have. 12-team single quarterback IDP. Sorry, Logan, passing that up. Here goes one right here on Sleeper. We've got a 10-team, uh, start 10, 12-team, no tight end premium. So pretty, pretty vanilla, right? Starting 10, 12-team PPR league. One side of the trade ledger receives Anthony Richardson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, and the 102 this year. Man, let's air horn that. That's a big, that's a big package right there. You're getting some young players, young studs potentially. The 102, a great draft capital for Dalton Kincaid, Lamar Jackson, and CD Lamb. Here we go. This is a crazy trade. This, this feels like the youthful rebuild versus the team that's trying to go get it in 2024 let's start with the side that in my opinion best players in the deal Lamar Jackson CeeDee Lamb Dalton Kincaid those are the three best play well I'll say Lamar Jackson CeeDee Lamb and the 102 those are the best assets in this entire package followed by a rich you've got Dalton Kincaid Jackson Smith and Jigba probably the least uh, well actually no tight end premium Dalton Kincaid would be the least valuable asset of, of all of them but looking at this trade on the merit Lamar Jackson, give me Lamar Jackson over Anthony Richardson. Lamar should be viewed by most everybody as a top, as a top five quarterback. Even in a uh, super flex, or if this is single quarterback, I'd prefer Lamar Jackson to Anthony Richardson. CeeDee Lamb easily over Jackson Smith and Jigba, so you don't compare him to the wide receiver. You compare him to the 102. And we talked about this today inside the Discord. What would you, what, how many players would you actually give up a top five pick for right now in Dynasty? CeeDee Lamb is one of those guys. Like, there's no doubt. Give me CeeDee Lamb over Marvin Harrison Jr., over Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May. Now, the flexibility of that 102 later down the line, that's a, different, that's a different conversation because if, by some chance, Marvin Harrison lands in a situation where people deem and believe that to be the second coming of wide receiver one, a lot of people who already have him valued that way. CD, in my opinion, has proven that he is just as good as Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. There is no tear break. He is in that elite category of wide receivers. He achieved the Trinity. He achieved the Trinity this season. So I would prefer the Lamar Jackson, CD Lamb, Dalton Kincaid side of this trade. But I'll tell you what, the side they got A Rich, the 102 and JSN, if you're savvy enough and you can freak this. I would be trying to move Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'm trying to float and test the waters, not trading that 102 yet, but just putting it out there. Hey, it's available. If anybody wants to come get their guy, you are guaranteed Caleb. You're guaranteed Marvin Harrison Jr. in this league. And you got a young stud in Anthony Richardson. So for me, give me the Lamar CD Kincaid side, but I like the flexibility and the liquid and live assets that Salty Dogs 34 got. All those players have baked in ADV, artificial dynasty value. People think JSN next season is going to take his game to another level. A Rich with Steichen, we saw what he did with Gardner Minshew. So another season with Shane Steichen in that offense, A Rich to the moon. And then the 102, you know it's going to be valuable. But I know unequivocally what Lamar Jackson, CeeDee Lamb, and Dalton Kincaid bring to the table. Good trade for both sides. I'd prefer Lamb and Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I agree with Jazz Mo's crazy trade right here. Let's see. Let's see what else we have. We have some other good trades that we saw in here. We got Josh Jacobs and Jamar Chase. All right, 12-team. Let's go through the settings. 12-team super flex. Tight end premium. Start 11. Just got my LSU boys together, Chase and Burrow. So we've got Josh Jacobs and Jamar Chase being acquired for the 103, the 303, 
Trey McBride and Rico Dattle. So I don't care about Rico. Trey McBride in a tight end premium league, he's it's a top three tight end. I hope you've been tapped in. I told you you should have you some Trey McBride had you been tapped in and listening. You've got the 103 and the 303. So let's just say Trey McBride, Josh Jacobs, value-wise, I think most people in a tight end premium would prefer Trey McBride over Josh Jacobs, but let's just kind of remove those guys from the situation. 103 or Jamar Chase, it's easy for me. Give me Jamar Chase very, very easily. So what's the delta between Trey McBride, the 303, and Josh Jacobs? I don't think there's a, if this is just a 1.5 tight end premium league, I know we're out of sight, out of mind. Josh Jacobs is going to be a starting running back somewhere next year. I love the flexibility of the 103, the 303, who cares? Trey McBride is a dope young asset, but give me Jamar Chase and Josh Jacobs. Now this one's a little closer for me because Chase is clearly the prize get on that other side of it. But giving up the 103 for Chase, I'll do that. McBride for Jacobs, I probably would rather keep McBride in a tight end premium league. Just my opinion, but I know that's a trade chip that everybody wants. And I think this is a good example of a trade in which sometimes you got to give to get. You got to give something that you like and that you feel value, feel is valuable in Trey McBride, but you get back a Jamar Chase in return for McBride in the 103. So good deal by Brian. I know it was probably tough giving up uh, Trey McBeast, but I think long-term you'll be just fine with Jamar and Josh Jacobs once he's rolling back either with the Raiders or on a new team in 2024. Oh, let's see what else we got. And I know, like, I don't care about Rico Dattle, and I really don't care about the 303. Like, if you told me 103 and McBride for Chase alone, I'm probably doing that deal. You're giving me a Jacobs on top of that. As I think through this, that's kind of like found money right there. I will take it. Let's see what else we have in here. A lot of stuff. Uh, 12 teams start 10 super flex half point tight end premium. Here goes a trade. Terrace Marshall, why on earth anybody would even want him is beyond me. And Rashad White for the 107 and the 207. Okay, this is just this. I mean, I don't know if I should drop a bomb for, for Dalton. I'll drop a woo because this is this is easily the pick side. I mean, 107 for Rashad White and Terrace Marshall alone. I'm smashing that air horn to the bank. And then you throw in the 207 on top of that. That's a Ric Flair woo right there. Like, why on earth would somebody even accept this deal? This is insane to me. Rashad White, fantastic season. I'm not giving up the 107 in this class for Rashad White. And I damn sure ain't giving up the 207 for Terrace Marshall. What are we doing, folks? Whoever uh, Slim Tropic is, DestinationDevy.com. $14.99, come join the Discord. You will avoid mistakes like this moving forward. Great job, Dalton. That's my boy Spacebound right there. Good trade. 12-team Superflex process move. Supposedly a late 25 first. Team isn't a world beater, though, uh, world beater, though, and old. Injuries happen. So what do we have here? 25 first for the 201 and the 512. I like this deal. I like this deal a lot. It's, it's a process deal thinking down the line. No, the 25 first, even if it's the 112, even if it's the 112, you re-rolled the 201 in this year's class, which is looking like potentially a back-end running back or the wide receiver seven in this class, potentially the tight end two, tight end three in this class for a 25 first. And the 25 class right now, it, it's, it's stacking up. You've got a bunch of live assets inside of that class, some incredible wide receivers uh, T Mac out of Arizona. You got Evan Stewart, who's at Oregon. You've got quarterbacks, Quinn Ewers going back. 25 class is going to be nice. And that's a first round pick in your war chest. And you don't know. It could be old. Uh, supposedly, it might be mid 25 first to move for the 201 and the 512. Nobody gives a damn about that pick. That's waiver wire fodder. Love this trade right here. This is a good deal. Nice process trade. Give it a couple of air horns. That's nice right there. Let's continue to move down. And we've got one from Dogtown. Dogtown in our Heisman group, Sharp, Sharp, Dynasty Manager. Let's see what he's got. Let's read the settings. 12 team, start 12 super flex. Depth is important. Picks are important. And at 2.0 tight end premium, this is my type of league. 12 team, start 12, start 13, start 14, 2.0 tight end premium, or start two tight ends. That's when it really starts to get into tight ends matter. Traded with the defending champ. I'm not reading this for fun. This is important context to the to understanding the trade. 
buying cards for next year and selling Rashad Bateman hopium. Let's see what he's got going on in this trade. So Dogtown receives Marquise Brown in the 206 this year. He gets rid of Rashad Bateman, Tajay Spears, and the 307, and the 307 in this year's draft class. So Hollywood Brown, out of sight, out of mind. Injured, didn't do shit with Kyler Murray down the stretch. He's done, right? Everybody thinks he's toast. He's cooked. Kyler came in mid-year. Hollywood Brown in and out. But by and large, like, Hollywood is who he is. Hollywood Brown is a very good wide receiver that is best utilized in an offense where he's playing that number two role. All indications are the Arizona Cardinals are going to upgrade their wide receiver position. That could be Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. Could be somebody later. They've got to get some more help surrounding Kyler Murray moving forward in 24. But thinking about Arizona coming into next season, just where they are today with Hollywood Brown, Michael Wilson, and Trey McBride, James Conner in the backfield, having all those guys healthy at the beginning of the season with Kyler Murray healthy at the beginning of the season, full off seasons of work, I, you, could, you could predict and project that offensively, this offense with the same crew intact should take a step forward. So I'm fine with betting on Hollywood Brown in a number two role especially in these type of in this type of formats where you got to start 12 anyway. Depth matters. It's a good piece. And then the 206, essentially for Tajay Spears, like, I get it. I'm excited about Tajay Spears, what he could potentially do in Tennessee next season. We don't know who the coach is, who the OC is, and we have no idea if he's even going to be the starting running back next season. It could be a very similar situation to where we just see the smattering of backs run out there. They, they bring a couple of free agents in. They draft another rookie. And it's we're living in a world now where very few running backs are their team's assumed bell cow, where they're getting 60%, 70% of the opportunity. So in this case, the ability to move Tajay Spears for the 206, trade Rashad Bateman in a 307 for Hollywood Brown, like, good deal, Dogtown. It's a good deal, man. Giving you two air horns on that one. I really like that deal. In this format, give me that 206. going to be valuable, especially with the depth that's required to win something like this. And he traded with the defending champ. So, you know, sort of a, a, a bet against the defending champ. And the Oracle, I'm in some trades. I'm in a couple of leagues with the Oracle, man. Sharp, sharp dynasty player in his own right, buying into that Tajay Spears. I don't hate it. I know he's a, I know he's a talented player, but I, for me, I'm okay with moving running backs who I don't, I, I can't reasonably project or assume that they're going to be you know, 60, 70 percenters come 2024. I like getting the capital right now. Let's see what else we got down here. Mm -mm -mm. Got a lot of talk about the trades. This is a beautiful thing about the trade channel. If you're looking for a spot to get some feedback, like there's sharp people in here all day, all night, all throughout the Discord. So what else do we have? We got two deals. Wasn't expecting the day. 10 teams, 10 teams, super flex, PPR, 1.5 TEP, start 10. Hammers only, baby. So we got Josh Allen on one side of the trade ledger being traded for, uh, traded for, in a way, we got Joe Burrow, Tank Bigsby, the 310, and then 225 thirds. So Allen for Burrow, essentially. That's, this is called just garbage. It's just junk. It's just junk and noise, and it makes this side look a lot better than it really is. Uh, give me Josh Allen. Pretty simple for me. Give me Josh Allen. That's, that's pretty easy. We've got a 25 first and a 24 third for Jalen Waddle. Interesting trade. Uh, I think I'd lean on the Jalen Waddle side of this one, opposed to the 25 first and the 302 in 2024. Deshaun Watson getting moved. Let's look at this one. Few trades I've made. This is a 14 team. Let's go. Start 12. That's what I'm talking about. 12, 14 teams. My type of party. Two tight end. This is this is this is the GQ. This has got to be a Heisman. This is a good GQ league right here. 14 team, uh, 14 teams, start 12, two tight ends, and then they're 1.5 premium. So the tight ends matter a whole bunch in this type of format. One side, my man Nick Pick Six receiving Deshaun Watson and Debo Samuel for Clyde Edwards Elayer, Gabe Davis, and a 26 first. Like, what are we doing, folks? Like, what are we doing right here? Whoever did this, get them in the trade right now. Brian Dipple. I don't know what about Clyde or Gabe Davis attracted you to this in a 14-team start 12. You moved Deshaun Watson and Debo Samuel for a 26 first-round pick. I hope Cedric Baxter fixes your problems here in three years. I, I really do because this is not the type of move that I'm trying to make at all. Smash deal 
for Nick. I don't give a damn about Watson, how much you like him or hate him. Give me Watson and Tebow Samuel over freaking Gabe Davis, Clyde edwards helaire and a 26 first round pick. Good stuff, Nick. Like that deal. And I see an Amon Ra trade here. If this is a, okay, it's not a three. We got Amon Ra, the 110 and the 312 for Lamar Jackson and Ty Chandler. Wow. All right. Let's see here. Few trades I've made, probably undersold on Lamar, but I'm a bit overweight and I wanted an Amon Ra St. Brown share. <sighs> yeah. In a 14 team league, I I don't know if I would really want to do this. I, I would prefer Lamar without seeing the whole roster and seeing the quarterback situation. I hope the QBs are rock solid. Maybe that's part of the reason why you went and traded for Deshaun Watson. I don't know if all these leagues are uh, all these trades are connected to that centralized league. But yeah, maybe a little undersold on Lamar, but you're getting the 110 and Amon Ross St. Brown for Lamar. Probably fair on value, but in a 14-team league, you know how scarce quarterbacks are, especially top five quarterbacks. I would have to look at the war on this one to see how much wide receiver score relation to quarterbacks, but that's one where I probably would have leaned uh, the Lamar side. I, I, I probably would have wanted a little something else outside that 312. Keep your 312. Give me a higher pick than the 110. Or give me something else back. I just I would have left the 312 out of that thing. Like I don't even want to give me something else. I'd probably lean Lamar Jackson side of this one, but getting the capital, Amon Ron, not knowing your quarterback situation, it makes it very difficult to to give you uh, you know, a concise answer for this particular league. I don't know if they're all connected. But we've got one right here, Jordan Love and the 309 for T Law. Here's an interesting one. I asked this question on Twitter. Last week, who would you prefer in Dynasty right now, Jordan Love or Trevor Lawrence? And the split was probably like 60-40, Jordan Love. I, I, I'll i just say this. I'm not down on T-Law. I think he was overvalued and overpriced for a long time. And the fact that he was the golden one, number one overall pick, and you know he's got all the tools, and there's some, some pieces in Jacksonville. I mean, he came in, valued top six, top seven quarterback, and the reality is I think he's like a back-end QB1. Like, re realistically, nobody's out there just paying up for Trevor Lawrence. Jordan Love, second in the NFL in touchdown passes this year, doing it with rookie and second-year wide receivers, part of a good young ascending offense. I, I mean, there's not it's not a ton of leverage. It's the 309, but is that enough for you to move off of your Trevor Lawrence? I'd say Jordan Love in this one season is put on wax probably – Close to what Trevor Lawrence has done throughout his career. You can't take year one of T-Law. It was, it was awful. Year two, much better. Much kind of like this Jordan Love season right here. And then this year, Trevor Lawrence had flashes of brilliance. And then most importantly, and, and what I've noticed a lot, is a lot of just inconsistent play from T-Law. Most people would still lean T-Law, but I think this is much closer, and I don't mind this, from Nick Pick 6. Getting a 309 on top of your Jordan Love for Trevor Lawrence, I'm fine with that deal. I'm fine with that deal. See what else we got right here. 12 teams, start 12. Super flex, six point per passing touchdown. Half a half a, a quarter of a point for a passing first down. A 0.25 rushing first down. You've got a tiered yardage bonuses. Half point tight end premium. And uh, got this done in the 15th round of a 2024 startup. So traded the 101 in a startup. Uh, 2024 104 for the 110, which ended up being Jamar Chase, a 25 first and a 25 second. So you're giving up, you know, uh, top four quarterback, still get Jamar Chase, 25 first and a 25 second. I don't mind this at all. I'm, I'm pretty sure if this is a snake draft, Fat Mike can go get you, go get a Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, Jordan Love, some of those players in the startup later on. So very curious to see what, uh, See what he got for that 104. What was that 104? Oh, it was Jalen Hurts. There it is right there. Jalen Hurts for Jamar Chase, first and a second. Mmm. Mmm. A lot of talent fell since we used placeholders to draft the 23-24 rookie classes separately. It's been a crazy draft. <sighs> Jalen Hurts, Jamar, 25 first, 25 second. He's got his roster here. He's got Hurts, Walker, A.J. Brown, Waddle. It's a good team he put together. Damn good team. I'm just curious as to... Uh, I'm curious as to the some of the other 
draft decisions in here. Okay, he went A.J. Brown at the 203. So he went chasing A.J. Brown is what he started. I'm curious, Jalen Waddle at 303, what quarterback would have been available at the 303? That's what I'm curious in because th that's a spot where he hammered wide receiver, which I'm fine with, but potentially would that have been a spot where he could have had, you know, Jordan Love in that spot. But I get it, Jalen Hurts, more dynasty value, more proven, more fantasy points per game. It's a very good roster, but maybe I would have tried to do this a little bit differently, especially inside the startup, let some things play out a little bit. It's the type of move that I don't think you have to make during the startup. Like, I'll just let the damn thing stop, let the draft in, and then maneuver and manipulate after the fact. I don't think, I, I, looking at how this draft played out, there's probably some moves Fat Mike could have done to keep that 25 first or 25 second, got Jalen Hurts in the deal. I think I probably would have just changed up my draft strategy a little bit, especially at that 303 spot with Jalen Waddle, knowing that you were going to double back with DK in the fourth round. And then uh, he hasn't really touched what he didn't touch wide receiver. It looked like after that. So see what else we have. Another Lamar Jackson trade. Got this deal done. Start 12, uh, 12 by nine. Super flex, 1.5 tight end premium. League, uh, my other two QBs are Herbert and Dak. Thank you for that context. So we've got Dalton trading away, Lamar Jackson, and Kyron Williams. This is a trade right here, baby. <laughs> This is a trade, little Ric Flair. Woo. All right. So one more time. This is a start 12, nine-team league, right? Start 12, nine-team league. So you're going to want some bodies. You need some hammers. You need a little bit of depth in a start 12 by nine. 1.5 tight end premium. His quarterbacks are Herbert and Dak. He got rid of Lamar Jackson, got the 101. Also acquired Anthony Richardson by giving up Kyron Williams. I like this. I like this trade. Lamar Jackson over A-Rich, in my opinion, yes. One-on-one -on -one over Kyron Williams, not even close. What's the delta between A-Rich and the one-on-one -on -one between Lamar and Kyron? I'd say I'd lean the flexibility that that one-on-one -on -one gives you. That could be A-Rich and Caleb Williams, A-Rich and Marvin Harrison, A-Rich and trade the one-on-one -on -one for a shit ton of capital and assets. Maybe you move back to the 105, get Malik Neighbors, and on top of that, you got a Brandon Ayuk at a 25 first. Could you move the one-on-one -on -one for Ayuk in a 25 first? Could you move that 101 for Puka Nakua in a 25 second? I think the flexibility that the 101, not the 102, there's flexibility there. There's flexibility with the 103. But the 101 in particular, all 11 or 8 other league mates in your league will want that pick. Because whether it's Marv or the quarterback, the desirable assets are yours for the taking. And most people will have one over another. This just puts Dalton spacebound 5 in a very good position to make some moves and be liquid and flexible and fluid during the draft. I like this trade. I'd Again, give me Lamar over A. Rich, but that 101 and what you can do with that pick right now and what you can do with that pick later down the line, I mean, invaluable. Nice trade. Love that right there by, you, by, by Dalton. Sending out A.J. Brown trades after Instagram. Ah, yes. Social media scrubbing. Nothing... Nothing incites, uh, encourages dynasty buying opportunities like players scrubbing their social media feeds. Go buy some A.J. Brown who's going to retire after this game, after they lose on Monday night, apparently. Acquired A.J. Brown for Jordan Addison in the 205. I mean, I'm fine. I mean, this is, uh, I don't really know what else I need to say. Give me A.J. Brown over Jordan Addison in the 205. I don't give a damn. Give me A.J. Brown. His knee's hurt. He's not playing this year. Fine. See you in 2024. Give me A.J. Brown. That's a cheap share of A.J. Brown. Like Jordan Addison, I like A.J. Brown a lot more than I do Addison and whoever the hell I'll get at the 205 spot. Good trade. Good trade. See what else we got. And uh, I think we've come to the end. That's it right there. Yesterday, that is it. We scrolled down. Let's scroll up and see if we can find a couple of more. I'm kind of kind of liking this right now. Let's see if we can just find a couple of more that maybe we didn't see, didn't touch on. This was uh, early December, so we'll leave that alone. That's a little bit later. Rick Reese. But yeah, there we go. There we go. Those are the trades today. That's what we got for the trade show. We back in the building, baby. I'll be doing these every single week, every single Saturday. Just talking through some moves that are going down in Dynasty Leagues. Hopefully can encourage and inspire you to get out there, make some deals if you see some stuff in your league, some players, some values that may be out of whack based on the production just because of the community sentiment today. Maybe there's some opportunities for you to capitalize and gain an edge on your league. And I highly encourage you to come over to DD.com, join the Patreon, get in the channels. Dynasty Trades in 5 is in there. 
That way you could talk about these things before you press accept. You don't want to make any bad decisions. Get in there, engage with the community. Get out there and grind your leagues. Be the aggressor. Send the offer. Don't get too crazy, baby. We've got a lot of time between now and the rookie draft, a lot of time between now and the combine free agency process. Slow play it. Do not overreact and make brash ju judgment trades. Make sure you got somebody to bounce some ideas off of, and that's what DD is. So appreciate you being here again. Like, subscribe to the content. This helps the channel grow. We can do more dope stuff. We've got a lot of cool things that we're going to be putting out over the next couple of weeks. Scott and I are going to do a war game series, prospect profiles, kickoff, mock drafts, wake up with Ray G every single Monday morning. We got you covered, baby. We love you. Thank y'all. I'm out. Peace.